the the Gemara tells us, the Talmud tells us that one of the attributes of mercy is over al pesha. Even something of defiance, God is willing to look away when the kolamavrel midosov mavir lo alpshov. If a person in his human relationships, although he has a claim, if you're willing to let it go and not make an issue of it, although God has an issue with the person, he treats everybody measure for measure. Even though he has a claim, if you let, let things go, he will let things go. It's not called overlooking it. He's aware of what you did, but because, but he's not going to hold you fully accountable for what it was. And if there's any way that he's able to somehow excuse you, despite the fact that you sinned, he will. Because just as you have a claim against your fellow, and although you could make the claim, but you agree, you're willing to look away, Hashem is willing to look away. That's called measure for measure. See, it said something similar, but it's based on a different principle. It's not measure for measure that, and he cited a verse in Telem, in Psalms, where David says, Ki ato tishalim lishma seyu. It says, L'cha Hashem chesed, because Hashem, your domain is chesed. God's, David is speaking, your domain is chesed. Therefore, you, you will pay each man according to his action. So the question was, if you're being paid for your good deed, why is that chesed? You deserve to be paid. That was the well, that was the question the Chavetz Chaim asked, and also he asks, "Ki lucha chesed?" He could say, "Teshalim lishkas." What's ki atot teshalim? You personally will pay. It's you. What is the inference of the you? Meaning, normally, everything is evaluated by the heavenly court. We call business shemalo. It's the heavenly court. It's made of angels. They sit in judgment and they make an evaluation of a person's record. And based on that evaluation, there's a verdict given. But it's their evaluation. And God oversees and allows this to take place because it's under his auspices. But what David is saying, ki l'cha chesed, your domain is chesed. You personally will be involved in this case. This is not under the auspices of the court. It's not under their jurisdiction. This is your personal jurisdiction. And because it's your jurisdiction and your evaluation, therefore you'll pay each person when God pays, he pays endlessly more than a person deserves. Meaning that even though it's not perfect, but because it's God's domain is chesed, when he reward, rewards a person, he does it in, in, in mega doses. And he gave the example that although he says, why are we able to do the mitzvah tefillin? Because we have an arm. And why do we have an arm? Because God wills that we should have an arm. And why do we have the means to purchase tefillin? Because God gives us the means. There's nothing in our lives where God is not the one who actually provides that reality. The only thing which is now domain is free choice. As the Gemara tells us, everything's predestined in a person's life. Your intelligence, your health, your wealth, your strength, everything. Where you find yourself in life, it's all predestined. One thing is not. Whether you be a tzaddik or Russia. That's the only area which God leaves in the domain of the person. So now you have an arm. You have the ability to purchase twillin. Why do you have the ability to purchase twillin? Because God provided you with the means. And why do you have an arm? And why do you have an intellect? Because God endows you with an intellect. So there's nothing in our lives that God is not the underwriter. He underwrites everything. But yet when we do a mitzvah, although he's contributed 99.99% of the ability to do the mitzvah, he gives us full credit. Full credit. So if that's the case, everything's chesed. Ki l'cho Hashem chesed. Hashem, you, your domain is chesed. And as a result of that, 
You pay man according to his action, but the action is not man's. The action is God's. It's only, as I said, it's like the, the rudder on the ship. The water is there, the current is there, and the boat is there. You just have to turn that rudder, and that rudder will determine in what direction the boat goes. So what are you providing? You're providing direction. That's all you're providing. But yet, when you arrive at the destination, why did you arrive at that, that destination? Because you turned the rudder in the right direction. Therefore, you arrived at that direction. In our lives, everything is, is, is God provided. Everything. Nothing. The measure even goes further. If you have a child to circumcise, why do you have a child to circumcise a male child? Because God gave you a gift to child. If you wouldn't give, if you, the, your wife would have never conceived to have a child, you wouldn't have the mitzvah milo. So why do you have it? Everything is what? Everything is a gift. Everything is a gift of God. The only thing which is not a gift of God is choice. That's yours. You know, it's interesting, you know, on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, or even fast days, we say, Avinu Malkeinu. And we say many things. During that Seresh made Shuvah, 10 days of pen penances, we said, Kosveinu Besefer Slicho Mechilo. We should be inscribed in the book of forgiveness. We should be inscribed in the book of livelihood. But we say something interesting. We say, and then when we come to Nila, the closing service, we, say, we should not only be inscribed, we should be sealed. Sealed for life, sealed for livelihood. But we say, inscribe us in the book of merit. What would it mean, inscribe you in the book of merit? A simple understanding. So the way I always understood the book of merit, to have merit, you have to have merit. To be able to do good things, God has to provide that for you. There's a concept known as Magal Zakai. God brings merit to the meritorious. If you're not worthy, God will not bring you that special that opportunity to, to do merit. I'll give you an example. A person's a deal maker. Who does he bring the, the deal to? The person who has the ability to do the deal. You don't have the ability to do the deal. He doesn't bring you the deal, the deal maker. And if he's done business with you in the past, and he did very well with you, the deal maker, he's going to bring you another deal. That's Megal Mesusari De Zakai. To who does God bring merit to the meritorious? That since that person is, go is worthy of doing the deal and succeeding the deal, because he has done that, he's proven he's done that, he's worthy of that, therefore God continues to bring you, brings you opportunity to be able to be meritorious to a greater degree. And that's the concept of Megal Mesusari De Zakai. God brings merit to the meritorious. Other people, I'll give you an example. The Talmud tells us that when it comes to charity, I always give the example. There's a question which is asked by the Chofetz Chaim. We find that there's a story when Avram was 99 years old after he circumcised himself. On the third day of his circumcision, the most difficult day of recovery, it's the hottest day of the of, in the history of the world, and there's no wayfarers coming. And Avram is sitting at the ent entrance of his tent, looking in every direction. W what's happening? Where nobody's coming. Hashem sends three angels in human form. He immediately runs towards them, and he offers his hospitality. Now, every nuance of that hospitality is put under the microscope, because he said, "Rest under the shade of my tree." The Jewish people, for 40 years in the desert, we merited the clouds of glory, which protected us from the elements. Of course, he says, take water. We merited the wellspring for 40 years, which provided us with water for 40 years. Millions and millions of people were provided with water for 40 years, including the livestock. And because he said to them, take a morsel of bread, and that merit, we merited the man, the manna. Tremendous. I mean, you would say, maybe is this the first time Avram's doing chesed in his life? Avram is known, even up to this point, he is the pillar of loving kindness in the world. He had four entrances to his tent. Whatever direction would come, he would enter in his tent. All of a sudden now, we make a big issue of his chesed. What about all the chesed that preceded this moment? Right? Why isn't that addressed? It seems that only because this chesed was unique. What was so unique about it? He didn't know they were angels. He thought they were some, whatever it is, Arab 
Wayfarers. He didn't know who they were. So why did it have such great value? So the Chavot Chaim says something interesting. I always give the example. If you host a Talmud Chacham and you host an ordinary person, both as needy as one as the other, what, what's the law? You fulfilled the mitzvah of hospitality. You did chesed. Mr. A needs nourishment. Mr. B needs nourishment. But Mr. A is an ordinary Jew and Mr. B is a special Jew because he's a Torah sage. He's a tzaddik. Although from the recipients, it satisfies the same need, but the provider, there's a difference between, and from the private, provider side, it's the same food. But the beneficiary, who's the beneficiary A and who's beneficiary B? Beneficiary B is the tzaddik. Beneficiary A is an ordinary person. The value of the B has greater value. Although the need was satisfied identically and the amount was the same amount given but because the beneficiary was a different dimension a person a greater value person therefore it has special value I'll give you an example you have a prince and somebody takes care of the prince when he was lost and he helped the prince find his way back to the palace what does the king, how does the king reward that person for taking care of his son in the most the most royal way? Why? He provided him with whatever the needs were, clothing, protection, food, whatever it was. He did the same thing to a subject of the king, not the prince. Same level of dedication. Who will the king compensate more? The one who attended to the needs of his son, the prince? Or the ordinary person? No question. The prince. Why? Because the prince is, is, is the king's son. Therefore, he will compensate him greater. An ordinary Jew versus a Talmud Chochem. In God's eyes, who has greater value? The Talmud Chochem, the Torah sage, has greater value. Therefore, the act of hospitality, although it's identical to both, but since the beneficiaries are a different level of beneficiary, the value of the chesed is a different degree of chesed. Hashem values the second person's Accommodation more than the first person's accommodation. Let's talk about you have different dimensions of people. You have an ordinary Tamil Chochem, have the leading say Torah sage of the generation. And you provide equally for both of them. They're both Tamil Chachom, both Torah scholars, but not at the same level. The one who provided for the greater Tamil Chochem, for the Torah sages, leading Torah sage of the generation. What you did for that second person, God values it to the nth degree. Because he's not only special, he's the most special. Therefore, you are a greater beneficiary. You will be rewarded and compensated to a greater level. Now, so Chavetz Chaim says, why did Avram merit? Do you know what it means to host an angel? There's no holier being than an angel. Nothing holier. So when Avram hosted these people, he thought they were wayfarers. But who are they? They were angels. So the recipient of his hospitality was at what, what level? You couldn't have a more advanced level of recipient. As a result of that, that's the reason why this hospitality was so special that when he offered the shade of the tree, it provided the Aniyakov, the clouds of glory. When he provided the water, it provided the wellspring of Miriam. And when he provided the bread, it provided the manna for 40 years in the desert. That's that's the understanding. It was the, now the worship. But why did he merit angels? You know, even to have angels, to be your host, guests, to host them, you have to have special merit. You know why? This was the accumulation of all the chesed did his whole life. This is the big payoff. The payoff is now you can have guests that are one of a kind. You know what they are? They're angels. Angels of human form. So now you can have the big payoff. Because now when you host these special people, you can have the ultimate. What's the ultimate? It will guarantee the safety of the Jewish people 40 years in the desert, the clouds of glory, the wellspring of Miriam, and the what? And the manna. So what is that? What is that concept? That's Magal Zakai. God brings merit to the meritorious. Why was Avram so meritorious? Because his whole life he was dedicated to doing chesed. The big prize is you get angels. That's even a greater prize. 
And when you host the angels, then you get the mega, you get the mega dose of reward. And what was the mega dose? Again, on the Akavod, the clouds of glory, the wellspring of Miriam, and the manna for 40 years. So we pray to Hashem, inscribe us in the book of merit. Seal us in the book of merit. What are we asking Hashem? That Hashem should give us opportunity in our lives that we should be meritorious to be more meritorious, to give us opportunity to be more, more meritorious. That's that's the understanding. That's Kosvein Mesef HaSchuyos. Mar tells us in, in one location of a Basra, when it speaks about charity, a person's meritorious. When he gives charity, Hashem will send you recipients that are truly special people. A person who's not meritorious, who will send you a b- bunch of ordinary people, even vagabounds, or charlatans, that present themselves as if they're needy, when you believe you gave charity, but at the end of the day, you didn't do much. I'll give you an example. A person goes, he raises money for a, a fund. Another person, one turns out to be a Ponzi scheme. You believe based on what he what he presented, you're going to make mega dollars. And then you know what you did? You took your money and you just wasted it. It's your, as they say, it's your hard luck. Well, they'll put the guy, they'll put the person in prison, but that's not going to help you get your money back. The other person who put put his money with a responsible, successful investor, money fund person, he's going to have tremendous returns on his money. The person who's worthy, the philanthropist, or we'll call the person who gives stalker, if he's worthy, Hashem will send you people that you're going to maximize on the return of that of that stalker, of that charity. They will be special people. Being special people, that means your action brings about greater greater value. You're accommodating a more special person. The other people, that not only they're not special, they may even have be negative people, although they're presenting themselves as if that's a worthy cause, although it's not worthy. But that's the that's the same idea. That if you're meritorious, God will protect you to bring you special people. Otherwise, he'll let the vagabonds somehow filter in. And therefore, it's purely an act of futility. It has no value whatsoever. That you should not be meritorious. I always say, what's the litmus test whether you walk in the right, the right, the right road or not? The litmus test is if the Madalus Chosei de Zakai, if God brings you merit continuously. Opportunity to do more mitzvahs and more merit, you walk in the right road. Because if you wouldn't be walking that right path, Hashem would not provide you with all these special opportunities. That's a confirmation. Other people, you know, certain people are accident prone. Actually, that's the way it is. They're accident prone. But people, for some reason, they just don't, they just can't succeed. Whatever they do, it's 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 literally, it's catastrophic. I'll give you an example. I'm not going to record this. 